So here in the Netherlands, almost everything is done by bike. And that includes the Christmas tree. So let me take you on a little bit of a journey about what getting a Christmas tree is like here in Amsterdam uh, via cargo bike with three kids on board as well. It's the whole package deal. Let's start back at the beginning. After getting our bikes loaded up, the first thing we need to do is to find ourselves a Christmas tree stand. In much of Europe, flower shops become Christmas tree stands starting around mid-November. The key though is getting a tree early as they tend to rather restock. We ended up checking out three different stands before landing back at the same place we bought trees from the last few years. While in other countries the battle might be for a car parking spot, here the trick is actually finding a bike parking spot. Like the world around, we poke and prod at trees repeatedly and with way too much overthinking, but that's part of the game. Eventually we found the perfect tree, which was dragged down the bike lane in between light cycles for us to check it over one last time. Next up, it's time for our tree to get bundled for its tour. I mean, ride home. Don't worry, I'll explain that all a little bit later. However, there's one little catch. I've got to make room for this thing in the bike. First up is child removal, not helped by the fact that one of them has a broken leg. Then, like clearing out a minivan, there's all the things removal. We've got blankets and more blankets. And as a side, see who knows where those are from. The gloves, why are they not wearing their gloves? Baby, of course, that's the doll right there, as if there wasn't already enough passengers on this journey. A dog leash and bungee cords. I think that's about it. Next comes the all-important tree to bike insertion process. Mind you, the littlest one up in the back there gets a front row seat, then all bungee corded in place, which is mostly just for show because the trunk of the tree is actually wedged underneath the bike seat bench. The littlest peanut is still not impressed or convinced by the rope skills. Now it's time to load this minivan up. However, the most important part here is deploying our first wave of waffles, strope waffles to be exact. While American parents have those tiny goldfish, we've got waffles and waffles win every time. With everything loaded, I push the kickstand out of the way and hope the weight and balance gods aren't upset about anything, to which we immediately get a red light. But here the traffic lights not only detect cyclists as they approach, but even give priority to them. So before we know it, we're off and cooking. With three little humans, one big human, one Christmas tree, two blankets, 88 gloves, and a dozen waffles, it's the first few seconds getting up in speed, getting going again, that can be a bit tricky to stabilize. But once at full speed, it's just, well, like riding a bike again. From there, we enter Vondel Park, one of the biggest parks in the city. It also acts as a bit of a bike superhighway to get across Amsterdam, allowing you to bypass traffic and streets and lights and all the things that slow you down. As we navigate this busy stretch of bikes and pedestrians, one of the things you'll notice is that nobody, well, notices. That's because carrying odd objects on bikes isn't a rarity in the Netherlands. Rather, it's just a daily occurrence. In fact, throughout this entire video, it'll be extremely rare for a local to give even so much as a glance as to the circus act that is this four-person, one Christmas tree, one bike situation rolling down the street. To the Dutch, this is nothing other than just another bike in the ebb and flow of the city. With that, we exit Vondel Park back into the cityscape and immediately stop to watch boats pass underneath us. On a normal year, these canals be packed with party boats lit up to see the canal Christmas lights throughout the city. Now, any Amsterdam local knows it's simply a requirement to pedal through the Rijksmuseum when shelling off the city. And I certainly wouldn't want to violate that unwritten but very much enforced rule. Plus, why wouldn't you want to pedal a Christmas tree on a bike through a building? Like other aspects of the city, on any other year you'd find plenty of tourists taking their photos and there's usually street musicians playing under the building. Still, this is one of my favorite spots in the whole city to pedal through and I'll always make an effort to include it when I can. After that, it was time to check off the next item on the list, getting Dutch donuts. These donut trucks pop up all over the city and country once the holiday season arrives. And realistically, who can say no to a freshly made donut on a day like this? And frankly, as far as our kids were concerned, this was the most important part of the adventure. The one thing left in our parental arsenal after waffles to keep this roadshow upright. Though one chose to simply get a bigger waffle, upgrading from Dutch waffle to Belgium waffle. And the little one in the back is upset because she's not certified on holding her own donut yet. Now, with the kids busy eating donuts, it was time for the most important moment of the day, getting the YouTube thumbnail, or that perfect Instagram photo. Thankfully, given the dwindling light and how far away the camera would be, we didn't have to worry too much about all the donuts still left on their faces. And astoundingly, we actually got a good shot. A random passerby offered to snap a photo for us, saving us having to dig out the tripod from underneath the tree. Still, not one to put all of our ornaments in one basket, we took a few more passes just to be sure we got a usable Instagram shot just in case the other ones didn't quite work out. With light fading and our GoPro struggling, we headed on to the last spot before pedaling home. And oh yes, we're going back to the Rijksmuseum again, because rule number one, always pedal to the Rijksmuseum. And maybe next year, I'll remember to use a gimbal on this old cobblestone street. Now, if you've seen a Christmas card of Amsterdam, it's probably of this picturesque street right here. Hey, I don't know who put these lights up. Santa! No scent! Yeah. 
With that important decision we made, we turned the bike around and set course for home. Finally. And of course, it's a bit of a team effort making this all work. Mom, uh, in this Mom, case, Mom. both of us on bicycles. Time to go. Now, for those of you that are familiar with Amsterdam, you're probably wondering by now why we're taking such a drunk uncle route to get home. And the reality is we make it a bit of a tour. It's a whole like tradition each year to get around the city with our Christmas tree and eventually making our way home. And of course that includes things like stopping for donuts and hot chocolate and everything else along the way. Anything to basically just keep them happy. Here we are traversing back across Walnut Park, that bike expressway across the city. It's just as busy at night in here as it was earlier in the day. Now watch carefully here at the magic of well-designed bike lane infrastructure. That roundabout gives priority to bikes, making cars stop for us. Albeit the other side of this intersection is a complete and total dumpster fire. Getting back into our side of town, we've got Olympic Stadium for the 1928 Summer Olympics. You can see the rings up top there if you rewind a second. On the back side of Olympic Stadium, a local restaurant has set up an outdoor drive or bike through as a method of takeaway. Obviously, we had a pedal or Christmas tree circus through this, and then later on we'd circle back around again to pick up dinner. Now thankfully we just cleared underneath all these light strips here, otherwise we would have decorated our tree in one shot. And yes, they're still eating waffles, but nobody is crying or trying to jump out of the bike. With this last bike activated traffic light complete, we arrived back home to procrastinate setting up our tree for a few more days. But eventually we got it all set up, making another successful Christmas tree by bike year in the books. We're coming up on nearly a decade of tree by bike adventures, but no matter how you get your tree home or if you celebrate at all, we hope you have a happy and safe next few weeks. Because the best thing is, in just a few days, 2020 is finally over. With that, thanks for watching and have a good one.